Hey folks, Free Play Frank. Today I've got a video for you young folks about the purpose of school. And then later I'm going to play a song by an American band called the Brownsville Station called Smoking in the Boys Room. Alright, let's get to it. Okay, so I want to talk to you young folks about the purpose of school. Now you might think, well, what does a grumpy old truck driver with a herd of goats know about what kids like or care about or need? Well, stick with me here for this video guys and I'm going to do my best to explain it to you because I've got much more knowledge now than I did when I was your age and I was in school. And then after you can go back to riding your bikes and playing your video games. Okay, so now school in the Western North American society was created back in the Industrial Revolution and the purpose of it was to train people to be factory workers and it was to train you to get up in the morning and to show up at a certain time every day and to follow orders and be respectable to your elders and not ask too many questions and not complain and just do what you're told and be a good citizen and uh, as time went on society has evolved to the point where we're not so much an industrial nation anymore so a lot of things have had to change especially in the way that society treats uh, marginalized uh, people and discriminates against people that are different or foreigners and so on so anyways back when i was in school it was in the 1970s and early 1980s yeah i know it was the last century I'm old, but back then I live in an area west southwestern Canada, and it was predominantly white. There was maybe two or three Chinese families, half a dozen East Indian families, and one black family in town. The rest were white people of European descent, and a handful of Americans that moved up to Canada for various reasons, usually work. And all the foreigners that I grew up with, all those families were really nice. Well, they had to be, because back then they were minorities. So in order for them to have any chance of fitting in, they had to really go out of their way to be really nice and polite and, and so on. And, you know, they would make the best friends and, you know, they would just do anything you wanted to do and they'd never complain. And, you know, you go over to their house and their parents would feed you all their their food from their country that they eat. And, you know, I, I got used to that. I grew up that way. And, but that was 40 years ago. And now it's gotten to the point where I would have to say that the white people are a minority in the area where I live now. And it's mostly people from Asian countries. So you don't have nearly as much problem with fitting in because there's so many other people that come from the same country as you so you don't have that issue anymore and also the government's pretty much made it illegal to discriminate you, know, you can't say anything negative or treat anyone negative that's a different ethnicity or from a different country than you or you're going to get in trouble basically the least thing that's going to happen to you if you say things against those people is people just won't like you. So that's one thing that's changed a lot about school since I've been in school. But let's get back to the, the part about uh, respecting your elders. And you, you have to look at it this way, kids, that there were people that came before you that created society and they built the highways and the airports and the schools and the hospitals and, and the house you're living in and, and all the, the factories that make all the products that your family buys. So you need to be respectable to those people. And you know, you'll have your chance when you get old or when you get out of school to, to make your mark in life and to have your chance to be anything you want to be. But while you're in school, you owe it to the people that came before you to be respectable to your elders and your teachers and so on. 
However, there are the occasional issue I've heard of where there's a teacher or a soccer coach or so on that is abusive. And if you encounter somebody like that, make sure that you always tell your parents about it. And if they try to scare you and say, well, I'll do something nasty to your family or something like that, if you tell, don't believe it. Because they don't have that power over you. They just want you to think that they do. So if you ever encounter anyone like that, a teacher or a football coach or something that's abusive, make sure you, you turn them over in to your, tell your parents first and let your parents take it from there. Like let them go to the principal or the police or whatever. Okay, so another thing that's really important about school is that you get to interact with all different types of personalities of people. Like some are going to be nice and some are going to be mean and some are going to ignore you. And basically it's going to go down something like this. You're going to come to school and there's going to be a handful of kids that are going to like you and they're going to want to hang out with you and as soon as they see you they're going to come over and start talking to you. And, and then there's going to be a handful of kids that don't like you for whatever reason and it's not your fault it has nothing to do with you unless you're being an asshole of course if you're just doing what you do and you're not bullying anyone or criticizing anyone or starting a fight or gossiping then it's their problem and it's not yours and don't let that bother you just keep going to school every day and doing what you do and then there's the rest of the kids which is probably 80 percent of the kids they're basically going to ignore you they're just going to be walking up and down the halls and sitting in the class and doing their thing and but they can take it or leave it with you like if you're a good person and you've got some something in common with them then yeah sure they're going to want to be your friend and they'll talk to you and interact with you but if you don't then they're just going to ignore you and leave you alone that's the way it should be, because that's the way it's going to be when you get older and you get out of school, guys. Uh, you're going to have to f find people that are on the same page as you. So while you're in school with, with all these other types of kids, you need to learn how to interact with all the different personalities. Uh, you can go back and you can watch my video about let's talk about bullying. You know, I give you some good hints there on how to deal with, with the other kids if they're bullying you. But um, that, for the most part, the bullying thing usually is a kid that's troubled at home, has some type of troubled, you know, his home life isn't happy or he's being bullied or, or abused by his parents or somebody. And he picks on somebody who comes off as weak or somebody who he doesn't think is going to stand up to him or report him. So you can watch my bullying video talk to you about how to act in such a way that you won't be a target for bullying. So that's really important. That's probably the most important thing that I learned from school is how to interact with all the different personality types because there's going to be people that are going to try and act like they're nice and, and but they want something from you so they're just going to be nice to you until they either figure out that you're not going to give them what they want and then they're going to disappear and not talk to you anymore or they might get mean if you don't give them what they want so you got that type of personality and then you, you're going to have kids that are they always want to be the boss like they're always going to be the one that's going to tell you okay we're going to do this this is what we're doing and it's up to you whether you want to hang with that person or not. You know, if you like what they're doing, then um, you can hang with them. If it's not illegal or it's not going to get you in trouble or hurt anyone, and your parents approve, then you can hang with them. But if they're doing stuff that is going to get you in trouble or put you at risk for some type of injury, or then you need to not hang with those people. You know, go find people that are because when you're a kid, I mean, you can get away with a fair amount of stuff, but not as much as what you see on, like you watch TV and the movies and stuff, and they got kids that are in gangs and they do all this. You're not going to get away with that stuff in real life, guys. It just doesn't work that way. Like Hollywood just, they, they make movies so that to entertain you so they can sell tickets to the theater. 
and sell advertising space. That's what that whole thing is all about. So don't believe any of the stories that you see on the TV about school and so on, because most of it's exaggerated. And that goes for uh, like when we get older into high school and when we start getting interested in girls too as well. I, you know, they would have you believe that all the girls are sexually active. And, well, that's not true. It's, you know, maybe in some parts of the states or, you know, where it's a much freer society. But where I grew up in Canada, it wasn't like that at all. The girls were kept on a short leash by their families. And basically, as soon as their family found out that a boy liked them, or they were hanging out with a boy, they would put a stop to it. So basically, expect that you're gonna be able to interact with the girls at school, but you're not gonna be able to do anything with them outside of school. You know, once you get off the school property, they're gonna go home and if you go to their place, most likely that's what's gonna happen. The parents are gonna say, no, no, you're too young to be having a boyfriend or interacting with boys. And, so, and then they're gonna put a stop to it and you're gonna to come to school on Monday and she's not gonna be all that interested in talking to you. She's gonna avoid you and stuff. Well, that's, that's just the way it is when you're young, folks. You need to get to 18. Once you're 18 or 19, you can do what you want then. And that goes for the girls too. But while you live under your parents' roof, you have to follow their rules. That's really important because they're the ones that are going to work every day to pay the bills to have that house and to buy your clothes and your video games and your bicycle and take you on vacations and all that stuff. So you need to respect them and you need to, to respect their wish, wishes in regards to how you interact with, with your friends and people of the opposite sex and so on. There's another thing that is happening now in schools that didn't happen when I was young and that's to do with being gay. Now back in the 70s and early 80s it wasn't socially acceptable to be gay. So there were people that were gay, there were a handful of kids in school that were gay and some people suspected it but they kept it to themselves because they knew that if they told everybody that they were gay or even if they told even one person that that person would gossip and then everyone would know and then they would get bullied and beaten up and harassed and you know, even the teachers would give them problems in a lot of cases and a lot of times their families would disown them back then but that's pretty much changed now like I'm I don't have kids of school age so but from what I hear now apparently that you can be gay, openly gay in school now and expect to be treated with respect and dignity, which I think is great. You know, it should be that way. That's the way it should be. Everyone should be able to do whatever it is they want to do as long as it's not hurting anybody or destroying the planet. You should be able to, to be gay openly if that's what you are. You know, just like me, I'm a truck driver and I raise goats and I'm all too happy to explain all of that to everybody and I'm proud of what I do and what I've accomplished in my life but um, so what you got to do there guys is if you're from an old-fashioned traditional type family where being gay isn't acceptable if you're straight then you just have to don't try to get in fights or bully or harass or ridicule any of the kids that are gay just just leave them be don't you know if they want to be friends with you or if you're working on a school project together that's all good you can do that no problem but if your parents find out and they're against you hanging out with someone who's gay most likely you're gonna to have to side with your parents and you just you can then then you just all you do then is you can just hang with that person at school and you just you know you don't bring them over to your house or whatever you know you can still hang with them at school because the parents can't say anything against that it's part of socializing and being a human being and that's that's another important value of school is that 
it gives you a place to go every day so that your parents can have time to themselves and or go off to work to earn a living. That was another big reason why they invented school. So while they're off doing their jobs or, or doing their shopping or you know whatever your parents do during the day when you're not around, you can be at school doing whatever it is that you do that's acceptable to do at school. Like if you're a football fanatic, then you can try and join the football team. Or if you can't join the football team, you can still hang out in the bleachers and cheer the team on. You know, it's one example. I mean, you could do anything. Like uh, apparently, from what I hear now, they've cut a lot of the extracurricular activities in schools over the years because of budget cuts and so on. But back when I was in school, we had sports, we had music, we had all kinds of shop courses, metalworking, mechanics, uh, woodworking. I took all of that. I, I, everything I could get my hands on that interested me, I'd sign up for. Some of it I'd drop after a while, but uh, for the most part, I just wanted to try everything that I could think of that was interesting while I was young and see what I really wanted to do. And that's what you should do too. You should explore every possibility. You know, if there isn't a program in school for something that you want to do, ask your teacher. You know, ask your guidance counselor. Like, say, hey, like, you know, I want to start a rock band. Uh, you know, I, how do I go about it? You know, they'll probably tell you to watch YouTube videos. <laughs> but, you know, they're there to help you. The, the teachers and the guidance counselors, and they're there to help you. And as long as you're being respectable and you have a positive attitude, then they will. They, they'll help you. But when you, you start having a negative attitude and you start saying, I'm not going to do it, and you know, I hate this and I hate that, then they're not going to want to help you. You're going to be left at the back of the class and you're going to get ignored. So it's always best to have a positive attitude. You know, always try your best to stay positive. And then there's another thing that I had trouble with and a lot of my friends in school I had trouble with is we'd be sitting in the classroom and a teacher would say, okay, Frank, I want you to get up and I want you to read from page so-and-so of your textbook. And of course, I didn't want to get up and read in front of the rest of the, the class because I knew as soon as I would, other kids would laugh and stuff and, and try to ridicule me. And, but that's just part of what kids do. Anytime anyone gets singled out for anything, whether you single yourself out by joining like a band or joining a talent show or something like that, or the teacher singles you out and says, stand up and read from page 32, Anytime somebody gets singled out, there's going to be a handful of kids that are going to chuckle and laugh. And, and, and that's just because of their own insecurity. Because when you're kids, you don't know what you're supposed to do all the time. Like You don't have the emotional maturity yet to understand how your actions affect others. So that just happens. And you just ignore it. You just get up, do your best, read what she wants you to read. And so she'll say thank you, sit down, you know, and I want, and she'll go to somebody else. And you could pass, you could say, you could just say pass, I don't want to do it. And then in a lot of cases, the teacher might say, well, no, you have to do it as part of this class, and we're going to make you do it. And, but a lot of times, they just won't ask you again if you say pass. But that's not good because. What that does when you stand up and read in front of the class is it gives you confidence. That helps build your confidence because you're going to need that when you ask a girl out on a date or a guy or when you go for a job interview or if you're in a band or some type of creative endeavor where you need to perform in front of people or when you go to city hall to get a building permit to build your dream home. You know, all those things you need to have confidence to be able to walk in and to be able to do what you need to do and say what you want to say. And the first time that you'd have to get up and read in front of the class, it's going to be tough and you'll probably be embarrassed. Your face will probably turn red, but that's fine. That's normal. And then the next time it'll be easier. 
and then the next time after that it'll be easier still eventually you won't have any problem it won't take that long it might take maybe a couple times and then you won't have any problem getting up and doing your presentation in front of everyone and you might even start to like it you might even even want to be chosen you'll be the one that's going oh oh pick me pick me you're putting your hand up to answer the questions because you, you like it you like being the center of attention and, you know that's okay too but just don't overdo it like, don't go to the extent where you're taking the the spotlight away from other kids like they need to have their chance too like, that's what school's all about it's not about one person dominating everyone and being better or smarter or more popular than anyone everyone it's about all the kids getting their chance to do what they want to do and to try everything that they want to try and ask all the questions they want to ask and remember the only stupid question is the one that doesn't get asked and another thing is every question that doesn't get asked the answer is always going to be no see where I'm going with that guys so if you don't ask like if you want to join the football team or you want to join someone's band or you want to have a spot in the talent show if you don't go in there and ask you know what do i have to do to join the football team what's the protocol to join the football team then the answer is always going to be no you know they can still say no but that's okay because you did your part you got up and you went in there and you asked for what you wanted and you did it in a positive manner and if it's a creative type thing like the drama club or the, you know, the school band or something like that, they might say no because you're not right for the part. And that's perfectly fine too because there'll be other parts that will come along either in school or in your life that you will be right for. And you're going to get a yes. You're going to get a lot of yeses. The older you get, and the better you get at doing whatever it is that you want to do. So main thing that I want you guys to do is to not quit like get up every morning you know wash your brush your teeth and put on your nice clothes and go to school and have a positive attitude and you know, have a good time with your friends and do your best to, to follow what the teachers want you to do and, and stay out of trouble because you need to have that guys like if you quit school you're gonna be left behind by a lot of things in life because there's a, a ton of stuff that you could do or you could join or whatever but they won't take you if you don't have a high school education so you need to stick it out guys and you know don't let any of that stuff bother you with the bullying or the teasing or you know any of that kind of stuff and don't let it bother you if another kid is more popular than you or you know he's getting more attention than you like, don't worry about that because that happens that's going to happen throughout your life like even rock stars get outdone by other rock stars eventually you know everyone they have, we all have our peak you know where we all get as high as we can get in whatever it is that we're pursuing and, and we can't get any higher the only place to go there after, when you reach the top is back down so that's part of life but you don't want to be peaking in grade 6 guys that kind of thing generally happens with the kids that don't try hard enough like you probably have a ton of ideas that you want to do a ton of interests that you want to do but if you don't try hard enough you're not going to get there so you got to make sure that you ask all those questions and you know try and if the teacher can't give you the answer you know then you can you can look on youtube and you can you know, go to other places in your town that are doing whatever it is that you do like for example when I got into music when I was in grade 8 I couldn't find any music teachers in my area that taught how to play rock guitar so I ended up having to teach myself how to do it and I did it by reading rock magazines about guitar and I did it by watching other people who were older than me play and by going to concerts and watching the guitarists in the guitar and play and, and so there's always an answer and I went to every music store and music school in my area when I was young and none of them had a teacher that could teach me rock guitar at that time so 
I feel confident that I did do everything I could do in order to be the best I could be at that time. But the only thing you can do if you fall into that category is that you have to move to an area that has what you're trying to do. Like, you know, I could have moved to Nashville, I could have moved to LA, but that wasn't feasible because I'm in Canada and trying to move from Canada to the States when you're a teenager. It's just not something that people did back then, and I wouldn't advise doing it now either, especially with all the stuff going on in the world. So you're just gonna have to stay in your your hometown until you graduate grade 12, and then you can do what you want to do when you're an adult. So, well, that's my talk about what's important about school and what's what's my purpose of school and all the stuff that I learned and about school and if I knew all this back then you know I would have had a heck of a lot easier time but uh, hopefully you guys will be watching this and it'll help you so you won't have to go through a lot of the heartaches that me and some of my classmates went through so good luck guys <laughs> Everybody's getting on your case from your teacher all the way down to your best girlfriend. Well, I found a way to get out of it. Let me tell you about it. Sitting in the classroom, thinking it's a drag. Listening to the teacher, well, that just ain't my bag. The noon bell rings, you know that's my cue. I'm gonna meet the boys on floor number two. Smoking in the boys' room. Smoking in the boys' room. Now, teacher, don't you fill me up with your rules. Everybody knows that smoking ain't allowed in school. Checking out the halls, making sure the coast is clear. Looking in the stalls, no, there ain't nobody here. Me and Fang and my best buddy Paul. To get caught would surely be the death of us all. Smoking in the boys' room. Smoking in the boys' room. Now, teacher, don't you fill me up with your rules. Everybody knows that smoking ain't allowed in school. Checkout counter, and I got bored. The teacher was looking for me all around. Two hours later, you know where I was found. Smoking in the boys' room. Smoking in the boys' room. Now, teacher, don't you fill me up with your room. Everybody knows that smoking ain't allowed in school. One more time! Smoking in the boys' room Smoking in the boys' room The teacher, I am fully aware of your rules Everybody knows that smoking ain't allowed in school it for this week guys thanks for joining me and see you all next time take care